come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that swings your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. I mean, we don't really swing. But... Well, I was thinking Spider Man when I said sure. that, but then after it what came out of my mouth, anything, Colin? Yeah, Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> it's we're swooping in. We we swing down. You know, you know. shouldn't try new things wow. sometimes. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I stick to that, what works, man. We got a formula for is, six years. Yeah, Spider Man has nothing to do with what we watched tonight. Maybe like we leap, you, we leap okay. in. We leap we pounce right. in. Night, we night pounce of the leap. We pounce in. <laughs> we pounce in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we, here we are <laughs> pouncing on you tonight. All right. That's not listener. Good Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's just bad well, when it comes. Let's move to, past yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, right. So no, let's I, talk about it for another five minutes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you want to talk to us, and we hope that you do, uh, you intro, can, I don't know if they're going. <laughs> you can write to us. Uh, well, well, you found us wherever on uh, wherever great podcasts are found. Obviously, uh, give us a like, a star rating, and give us a review. Hey, if you write into those things, good or bad, we'll read your reviews yeah. later on our show when we. Uh, trot out our mailman Igor. But if you want to write to us, you can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can use the old fashioned email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. All for the time of your life. Here in our quest for total world domination to become the greatest movie podcast ever recorded. Mm-hmm. Who are the internet radio superstars? Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean, what did we watch tonight? Uh, the most irresponsible movie ever made. <laughs> we watched Roar. From the Roar. year... 1981. Directed by... Noel Marshall. Okay, who is this guy? Because I've just seen this movie... <laughs> And he like wrote, directed, probably produced. I uh, mean, it's, tech, it's produce, directed yeah. by Robbie the Ryan. It's uh, copyright the Noel Ra- Marshall. <laughs> Who is he? Uh, he was a producer on The Exorcist, and he didn't do a lot else. No, but who? How did Tippi Hedren meet him? Tippi Hedren's in this movie. Tippi Hedren's in this movie. Tippi Hedren is his wife. Right. Noel. Okay. Uh, uh, film fans know her from The Birds. The Birds. Probably Alfred Birds Hitchcock. Two, Land's uh, End. Was she in that too? She was. Yeah, Marnie, another Alfred yes. Hitchcock yeah. movie. Yes. I mean, those are her primary credits. I think yeah? so because I looked through and I didn't recognize much else. So those are the big ones. Yeah. But you all know, like Tippy Hedren is like it's a name you know, right? Because you she's know the Hollywood at some point. Tippy Hedren, mother of uh, 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 what's her name? Melanie, Melanie, Griffith. Melanie Griffith and yep. grandmother of Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson. Yes. yes. Indeed. Hollywood royalty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty so much. how did Noel Marshall? Hook up with Tippy. I'm just kind of curious how this like happened. Who was he? Was he like a singer star? He has money, obviously, yeah. right? He there's seems a like whole, a wealthy there's a family, eccentric. There's a, there's a Marshall family. It it feels like like they they come from that. I don't know the history of Noel Marshall or okay. where he comes from. I know he got into producing and stuff like that. And he produced like uh like six films and all that. But uh but that's it. Like he kind of didn't not much after that. Well, I mean, the reason I'm asking is because obviously it takes uh, some capital to do a movie like Roar. It does. Yeah. Even if it involves selling off most of your property and land and houses and whatever else you own to finance a film such as Roar. What, 17 million to be exact? The final count was 17 million to make this movie. This is in 1981 dollars. This is over an 11 year period. This is over an 11 year period. They started filming in the 70s. They started writing it in 69, 70 because uh, they wrote it that's funny. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Well, that's okay. generous. Uh, this may be a general outline, but like Tippi Hedren did a, a movie called, what, uh, Satan's uh, Harvest? Satan's Harvest, in which she worked with uh, giant cats as well. Um, and then she got she uh, got this affinity for them and decided that um, they were in need of, uh, uh, it was a cause in need of her effort. So she's like, we need to save the cats of Africa. And so she got this idea. And then Noel Marshall wrote it about a movie where they're trying to save giant cats. So, so this is not the movie I watched. 
No. That was, well, this was her idea, no, this this was, was her idea in 1969-70 when they were writing. I mean, yep. to be fair, there was lots of rewrites from Robbie the Lion yeah. after yeah. Yeah. Well, this after is very that. true. As it says in the credits, uh, <laughs> this would not be possible without them, so we must share the directing and writing credits with the lions of this movie. If you're That's unfamiliar right. with what we're talking oh about, God. just going into this, this roar... Roar. Is a movie that stars a gaggle, a pride, several prides, maybe. Several prides, I would say. Of lions, uh, tigers, tigers, not tigers, bears, tigers, not bears. Uh, panthers, leopards, panthers, and panthers, and, right? and mountain lions, and zebras, and, and elephants, yeah, elephants and elephant. flamingos, yeah. Yeah. pelicans. Cheetahs. There's, there's lots. Cheetah. Pretty yeah. much every big cat you can think <laughs> was of. Was this yeah. movie filmed in Africa? I don't think it was. So no? a part of it, I assume, wrong. was actually filmed. On Some of savannas. it looks like it is. It's yeah, gotta, it's like, gotta it, be. It, it, it looks it's that be. opening yeah. with the giraffe definitely looked like. Yeah, it that's. Was. I mean, that's African landscape. Yeah, so. but some of it could have been like in California somewhere, like the actual main set. Well, yeah, because she has her her wildlife preserve is like in the desert in California. What's that called? Uh, Shambhala Wildlife Preserve. She still lives there and does tours there now. At ninety years old or whatever. Yeah, and she yeah. has a bunch of cats on this. She has famous ones. Yeah, she has oh. Anton Lavey's lion. Named what? Togar. Yeah, really? yeah. Oh. Anton Was it him in the movie? He would I do don't that. know if it's the same Togar. I'm assuming it's the same Togar. No, uh, I, really? But Anton LaVey's lion, after he died, she took it. His name's Togar. Yeah. And then Anton she, LaVey had a lion? He yeah. Just, like, she also has Michael Jackson's two lions, too, or tigers. He had two big cats that she took in after he died, too. So. Is this where uh, Siegfried and Roy get there? Yeah. No, they hang on to theirs. They, they, they actually, like... They have some sort of conservation status because they actually I like have bet. the highest population of white tigers in the world are owned by them. Right. That so, makes sense. There are more white tigers owned by them than there are in the rest of the world. So Damn. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's a it's a def- defect, you know? White tigers aren't naturally occurring in nature for true. a reason because it's not advantageous. So they're there it's like it's kind of like how we breed dogs down to have fucking round heads and mm-hmm. you know, shit like that. Like that's yeah. not naturally occurring, right. you know. Yeah. So well, this is an odd movie in all of cinema dumb, right? Uh, yes, it is very unique. Um, if you've never seen it, you've at least heard of it because I've heard of this movie for years and never seen it. For years, uh, it's my first time seeing it. Are tonight. you saying ever since 2015, right? Like you'd never heard of it before 2015, and then the when it, Alamo when it got draft the wide house. release. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I heard of it before that. Because I don't think I ever was aware of this thing, even though if not too far before that, but. Maybe before that. Okay, so this is uh, the, the but why it's in the public consciousness now is because Tim League, who runs the Alamo Draft House yes. in Austin, started a video label. Well, I mean, they show all sorts of weird movies right. at it's the, the shit Alamo they Draft find. House, and they're on a on a quest to find the weirdest fucking shit. Which I think on their video label, although they did put out Miss Forty Five, which is a good label mm. for our movie. Um, the two movies that stand out to me is one is the Miami Connection. Yep. They mm-hmm. found Miami yep. Connection, and they also found Roar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, obviously, they'd been released before but forgotten about, and then they've turned up a print, and they're like, oh, my God, this is the craziest fucking shit you've ever seen well they cut together a trailer which yeah. is one of the greatest movie trailers i think i've ever seen roar. in my life <laughs> and <laughs> roar yeah um, although roar never released in the u.s oh wasn't it never really never released Australia, in the states right? it was, it was on videotape though there was a vhs of it i remember was it bootleg because it was never officially got released here uh maybe a vhs yeah but not, only, not theatrical. only no only theatrical and very limited was overseas mm-hmm. never theatrical here and very limited in what you could get there was vhs you're right uh, of this and uh, not until like you said 2015 until tim league discovered it that it got released on Blu-ray. When I went and saw Won't You Be My Neighbor at the Draft House, they showed this trailer Roar. before that. Did they really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's their movie, so they're going to promote the true. shit out they of would. it. So. Yeah. Well, like, that, buy the Blu-ray. Yeah. That roar in the trailer is from the original trailer. Right. That's the part, yeah. Roar. Um, I don't know how to describe this movie to you folks. Is like, it a movie? I don't know experience? if it qualifies as a cinema movie. Veritas? There's well, no plot. This is this is reality TV in a yeah in, in a film form. Yeah, it is. No, there, there's no there's there. plot in this movie. I don't you, know about- oh my god, this <laughs> is reality Sean, TV. Actually, no, no, no. Sean, tell me what the plot of this movie is. Uh, oh, this is good. No, Hold on, is, let me butter my popcorn. No, this, is, this is reality TV because there is a loose plot set by the producers, and everything else is just improv. It's reality TV. So is there a plot I, or is there I, a story? I would say I would say reality TV producers interfere with the story more than the 
people in this movie interfered with the story. Oh, yeah. Cal- all right, Cal- I, I think yeah. Colin producers maybe, control a lot of things. On no, I agree. TV. I agree. Yeah. You're right. Maybe there was no not control here. There's definitely a story to this movie. No, I want to hear right. you describe not, the plot of this not, movie. I want to give you right. enough rope to hang yourself here. Story, yes. Plot, probably not. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I don't. Uh, so, I don't even think there's a story. No plot. I don't story, think there's yes. anything. Well, I would say so because there's there's a man who's Noel Marshall mm-hmm. who is uh, who has been gone apparently for three years from his family and is running a uh, his own preserve in Africa. Yeah, where it's he's like, trying. It's like an animal sanctuary, but really, it's just he opened his it's, home it's, to it's, lions. He built a house and then opened it up to <laughs> yeah, wild it. animals. Honest, those animals would be fine without him. They don't need him. They don't and need him. you know what? No, that's bullshit. I think because he's trying to find a place for them to congregate. But so that nobody will shoot. Half them. those animals aren't native to the place he's living in. He That's did, the problem. He did yeah. bring them in. He has yeah. tigers and tigers. He has tigers, ti- tigers and mountain lions and panthers. Like he has stuff from all over right. the world. He's mixing so everything. So he's, he's brought them shit. in to try and save them. I, th- I think and he's so making he's, it worse. He's mm-hmm. made an unnatural environment uh, where there are just a bunch of different. He's making it worse. Wild yeah. cats. And then he called it Shambhala. I'm sure. Oh, I mean, that's I not know. explicit in the movie, yeah. but no, that's... And he invites them into his house, and he sleeps with them. He does, and yeah. he's been doing this for years, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, he's still alive. Uh, but his, his family is finally coming to visit him in Africa, which which is his wife, his two sons, and his daughter. Mm-hmm. Melanie Griffith. Melanie and, yeah. Griffith and John Marshall. and I think He looks just James. like his dad. I could not does. tell them apart. Hey, they got the I was same like, hair. that same they... wild look about yeah. them. Yeah, uh, John may have more beard than mm-hmm. his father does, but the craziness is, I think, all still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they all come to visit him, um, and there is a mix-up of uh, you know of messages where uh, of when they're coming in from the airport, when he should quote unquote pick them up because yeah, I don't know how he was going to do that. Yeah. it's nuts, <laughs> and it and it it feels like. Like, so, I guess your dad's coming to pick us up later. I hope so. What's he doing at the time? He's like wrestling with lions with, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, uh, Mativo. 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 Uh, they're out like trying to wrestle lions that are fighting around the house. We, we say this. <clears throat> if you haven't seen it or don't know about this movie, I can't express enough. They are wrestling Maybe that's lions. where we should start. It's, we should even before we, we get should. into the story. Yeah, yeah. Getting, before we get into the story, it, it, it is a movie a, with that used at least 150 <laughs> wild cats <laughs> through its production, which lasted four years total in filming, eleven years from script to end. So they are wild African. Cats, yeah, mm-hmm. lions. The tone tigers. of this movie, and it's ironic because at the you know when we watched the trailer after the movie was over, and it said Swiss Family Robinson. Michaela and I were talking before uh, we came down here. Mm. It's like the movie has a tone. If you remember those like nineteen seventies live action Walt Disney mm-hmm. uh, movies, yeah, absolutely, yeah. like Swiss Family Robinson or Johnny Appleseed or mm. uh, uh, Treasure Island or stuff like yes. that. Yes. Uh, so it feels kind of like it could have been one of those movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. It really does. But <laughs> with it, a whiff of death. <laughs> with a whiff of death. Yeah, because the whole thing is shot in and around, and it feels like the whole thing is a lot of improv. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would wild, have to be. Like, just imagine. When you're dealing with wild animals. It's got to be a wild. Lot like, when we're talking animals, right? We're talking about the animals that tear people apart. Yes. With their claws, yeah. they've got giant fucking. They're called man eaters. Yeah, for the king of the jungle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beasts of the wild. Beasts, <laughs> the ones you see rip apart like it, antelope and just have blood yeah. smeared <laughs> all over their faces. Legit, legit and nature, don't care. nature show animals. Well, and what yeah. you, like, do you think at the most? There's probably like what, like fifty in a shot at the most. But like at the least, even even still, fifty at the, lions. Even still at the least, you're like seeing at. Like I feel like there was never a time when there was just one on screen. No, no. there was always no. like maybe six when he or was seven. talking to Gary. Yeah, there but was like, one on Gary screen. The lion. Gary yeah. the lion, Gary you know the son of Robin. But like anytime you saw just one, it's just because they cut in really close. Yeah, it, the other ones were all still there. They just oh, had yeah. to cut in really close on that one they wanted to show. But yeah, it's just like you, 
You can't keep track of how many there are on screen They're at once. They're never it's not like, around. You know that scene in Short Circuit where they go to Ali Sheedy's house <laughs> and I she do. has like the raccoons and the kittens crawling all over her house because she's like the no like, foster well. yes. yeah. yeah, It's like that, but like big scary Giant animals. Giant yeah. like, bigger animals. Yes. And imagine they can kill you. Yeah. Right. They, they can and, like, bite you. But like there's so many of them you can't get through a door because like yeah. you, there's so many of them packed in this space that like you can't even open a door without hitting six of them, you know? Yeah. Like, it adds this level of interest to the movie where there's the plot, the story of the movie, sure. right? Which they came up with and this whole kind of like right. save the lions is, thing that they want right. to do. It's all secondary to just viewing people in the vicinity of a shit ton of lions. Yeah. Like, like there's so many in, a, in like, the vicinity. Wait. I like the way you're saying that because at yeah. one point, like, directly two rubbing lions, up against two lions are fighting, and they are clearly like one establishing as the movie sets out, like two male lions, yeah, yeah. are like rawr, rawr, you know, yeah. And Noah Marshall goes running in there, to break yelling up the at fight, him. yeah, <laughs> yelling at these lions. Oh, I, 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 I don't think I don't. And think you're just we're, like, I don't, oh my god, <laughs> I, you really, you are. You I are. don't think we're fully. Expressing, we watch people actually get injured making this movie. Yeah, we actual like wounds from claws of real lions. We start out with Noel Marshall, who I'm real blood. Uh, who, who I uh, uh, maintain is an insane man. Okay, insane. I am gonna now. Uh, I thought the idea maybe that. he's uh, uh, maybe he's a eccentric. He's a rich eccentric. That's well, what he no, is. Well, uh, sure, and I got that. <laughs> but if you you understand that the first time you see him talk. Mm-hmm. You understand this mm-hmm. man is insane. Yeah. He is delusional. <laughs> yes. He is an insane person. Yes. Well, because of the way he speaks and the way he speaks about these animals. What are you talking about? Because it's just he is, it, it, he is in denial about the fact that they could kill him at any moment. Okay. Like and a, it's Grizzly thinks, Man. And he thinks yes. he has some understanding with them, mm. some power over them, that he can stop them. He thinks he has control. At one point, and he does not. At one point, while watching this movie, I said the crazy thing is that he is speaking and acting with these lions like I do with my own cat. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the problem. That is the fucking <laughs> and problem. There's a slight size difference. Slight difference. <laughs> well, we're saying it sounds like a condemnation, but this is fascinating. It's what? fascinating. <laughs> Because you're like absolutely fascinating. Holy shit! I mean, every single scene feels like I at could some not look point, away. <laughs> no, could someone not look is away. about to die. You can see actors in scenes where, like, clearly they are not comfortable. Yeah, in the scene where like these lions are like looking right, looking you know, like you look uh, kind of delicious right now. Right, and, and all, the and actors all these... are like, okay, I got all... you know, and you can hear people like I think at some point like yelling out for help, yeah. help, help, <laughs> and then we cut. <laughs> Well, and like as all of us being like cat owners, I think we know there's certain things you don't do because like you know it's going to trigger your cat, right? No. Like you know, like if you move your hand under a blanket, your cat's going to attack oh, it. Yeah. Things like that. We know that like just as a cat owner, you don't do those things. If you run away from your cat, you, you trigger their prey. <laughs> Most <instinct>. likely, <laughs> you trigger their prey <laughs> instinct. They're, they're going to like, chase. Oh shit! I need to chase that. I feel like no one in this movie knew any of those basic like cat behavior things of like don't do this because you're going to get a reaction. Yeah, they, no one knew any of that. No, don't like, rub a cat belly. This is don't rub a cat belly. Naive eccentric Hollywood types <laughs> who got a a, a, a passing uh, experience with with uh, wild cats mm-hmm. and were like, oh no, their cause is so uh, harrowing that they we, we should do something to help them in and not understanding what a giant fucking lion will do to someone mm-hmm. and they're just like we we need to it's help hubris. them and we should just go, we need to go live with them and. Help them and contain them. Well, this is okay. So you you looked into this. I mean, I watched the documentary a couple years ago. You're very fresh on this. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of reading. I know how many stitches Yanda Bont got in the back of his head. That's the cinematographer. Yeah, turned director who went on to make movies like Twister and, and Speed. Speed. Yeah, uh, and he shot and Die Hard. Legend. He did. And, you know, Legend. and Das Boot. I think was also. Fuck, Le- he did a great job in this one. Yeah, because considering the environment he was working in, some of the shit he pulled off. Beautiful. Well, mm-hmm. my question is, mm. right, so this took 11 years, yeah. so, uh, and you're saying it only shot for four of those, so the 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 Noel Marshall clan mm-hmm. uh, grew up with these cats then, right? So they are wild cats, but at the same time, it's like, 
you know, because this is, you know, while they watching while, the movie, yes. I had the sensation. I mean, I was trying to like imagine what it would have been like to be on this set where, you know, if you if you know these cats and you've grown up with them, right, you've, you've known them for most of your life, mm -hmm. that now I am going to pretend like I'm afraid of them. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of giving the cats all of those, uh, you know, uh, signals mm -hmm. that would trigger the, right. <laughs> their uh you mm -hmm. know their prey instincts right i feel like <laughs> if you go do that to a giant cat they'll start reverting to that you even know. your house cat is it, like i said it's it's we were talking about when we were watching this how much house cats and big cats are exactly the same. The behaviors yeah. are exactly the same. It's just a size difference. That right. is literally the only difference. Yeah, the only reason your house cat's going to back down is because it sees that you are bigger than it. And yeah. that goes and away even then, when you're a giant they don't. lion. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know they're giant? Maybe they're, it's that whole thing where like they think it's Napoleon small. I think they know syndrome. They're giant yeah. when they take a swipe at your head and you go. <laughs> I think they know well, they're giant. You then. see them? They're like batting shit back and forth. They're like. You know, there's a string that, you know, they, t at one point, two lions are pulling a string and the other one lion just keeps on like uh, batting at it because he right. knows in the past, like I've done that and it's broke Yeah, mm -hmm. just by putting my weight on it. Yeah. Now it's like, what's going on? Right. Or there's fucking lions pulling boats over and they're just like, ugh. Yeah. yeah don't come, <laughs> come back, back you here. Should, you should come back. No, yeah. Come back. We, we want to eat you. Come that to me was like when, when your cat like just takes its little toes and puts it in the water to kind of yeah. like test the water. I was like, I've seen my cat do all these yeah. things in this movie. My cat before. does that when I'm drinking whiskey. Like she'll like take her little paw and just like dip it in there and be like, what's this? What's going on here? Your cat have a drinking problem? She does. As a matter of fact, she's constantly trying to go for my booze. Well, these cats, I mean... Uh, there are, you know, when we're when we're saying that there's, you see people getting injured in the movie. The the plot and story of the film doesn't obviously say that they're getting injured. No, that's you're the just, problem. You're aware that like in this shot. So this is, I guess, the way you watch this movie. It's like, yeah, there's the story that they're trying to tell about, you know, like uh, this family trying to get back together. They're what they're separated. Uh, the family comes back to the house. While Noel Marshall is off trying to go to the airport yeah. through a series of misadventures, it's it's an. By the way, that's an Act One uh, story plot that takes over the entire movie. Well, because the the I just imagine the making of this movie was like, yeah, hey, now you get in the boat and you're gonna go down the river, and then like the cats jumped on the boat and fucking sank it. <laughs> what even? Now you're like, like, well, now what do we do? <laughs> but like, like, what even was the point of that scene? What were they supposed to be doing in that scene? I think you know, there was a point before the cats jumped on right, it and sank like, the boat. But they when they were putting the boat in the water, something? what were they going to do? Because they didn't say what they were going to do. They were going to pick up the family from the okay. airport. Yeah. That, that's what okay. I feel, yeah. Yeah. So then, that's why that's why he, he they were that's in. why the guy came to his house in the first place. He was going with him to get his gotcha. family. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Which I never kind of I didn't really get that though because I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I yeah. got it, yeah, but yeah. I don't understand the logic. Of no, it I don't either. Yeah. They arrive and they're like, where's your father? Well, yeah. I hope he's going to show up. He is apparently like 20 miles away at the house yeah. trying to deal with a couple of cats fighting. He's got to get couple. that under control. Get the <laughs> other cats couple. out of the house. Clean his house. Right. So he can go pick them up and bring them back to his house. This is like having kids. You clean it, and an hour later, there's dead zebras all over the place. It's just <laughs> like having kids. <laughs> there was a straight up head in that lion's mouth. There was a, head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zebra a head in that lion's mouth. There was a crime scene in that house. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah they're just shit. smearing blood all over the place. They don't care. The, I got to tell you, though, I mean, the animal acting in this film by it's these not lions. Acting. It's not acting. It's not acting. It is the luck of the captured on oh, camera. Got Robbie right. and uh, Tovar. Uh, so very far. method because I method. believe that they wanted to eat everyone. Yeah, every uh, yeah I did yeah. too. I think it was because they actually <laughs> did. Yeah. This is like if Mads Mikkelsen really wanted to tear people up and eat them and cook them. And yeah, them. same thing. I've never. I don't think I've ever seen a movie like this. No, no. I mean, there no. is nothing like this because it's nothing. like a cross between a nature documentary, but it is the most dangerous thing. Where you it's like freaks like, using freaks. Yeah. Well, you've seen like because it's. I mean, I guess when you boil it down, it's an adventure or a stunt movie, right? Mm. I mean, there are stunts happening here. People yeah. in barrels getting yeah. rolled over Motorcycle the Motorcycle jumps a couple. Yeah. So it kind of has that kind of appeal it's to a, it. It's a gimmick movie. 
is what it seems like. I don't think. I it think was, it's unintentional. Yeah, it was. It was. Right, it wasn't was yeah. meant yeah. to be. Now, now it is. Though. Yeah, it became. Now that. it is. Yes. Yeah. You're saying that he, you thought that you think that Noel Marshall thought that it, this was a straight up like adventure oh, film. Yeah. I straight, think he thought I, he was making like a prestige movie. Yeah. Straight message yeah. adventure yeah, he's, movie. Yeah, right? he's yeah. straight up There's like, a point to this. We yeah. need to save these animals. Yeah, and he this was is coming from about he was coming from a straight political stance. Yes. Like we need to save the animals of Africa. Yes. Okay, so here's yeah. my question then. Yeah. Just one. after seeing this movie, why the fuck would I want to save any of these animals? I don't understand their perspective. Didn't you see the end where they're all snuggling? <laughs> right. after, after it was a straight up horror movie for an hour before that? Like, this movie turns into a slasher movie I'm for sorry. like a good 20 minutes. When they when all, I'm sorry, when they all snuck into the little house and slept with them, is yeah. that not a dream come true? But That's the, the lead up up until that is them hiding in closets like he's fucking Michael Myers. Yeah. You know, it's a, like, this is, this is, if you're, if the whole point of this movie is to be like, we need to save these big cats. Donate to our, you know, charity. Look how great they are. This is it. it fails at that. I it think, yeah, I, I, I see what I see. What you're that. saying. I think most people yeah. recognize that uh, we want you to save these cats. We don't want you to live with them because that is yeah. obviously a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it's like but I see they what, don't think it's a bad idea. The people idiots. making the movie they're do not crazy. think it's a bad idea. It's like yeah. I see what you're saying. They did it, but <laughs> I, 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 I see. I see it, and I raise you cat snuggles. Yeah, but like for like twenty minutes, that one scene does not make up for the hour I saw before that. Lion nap, that'd be great. Right, that's worth. Plus, you got the lion like trying to ride the the skate or the roller skate, the skateboard skateboard, bits. Yeah, Yeah, their message doesn't make any sense though, because if they're if they're advocating for conservation, this is the opposite of that. Like bringing animals into your house is not the same thing as conservation in the but wild. They, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what is their fucking end goal it here? It takes like because this is, I guess, you're, you're supposed to go on the the and adopt the perspective of the Tippy Hedron uh, and her daughters and and or daughter and sons, where they come into a situation and there's lions and lions are fierce, crazy creatures and they're trying to kill us, mm-hmm. and then they get away from the lions. And they go off and have a nap. And then the lions, like unbeknownst to them, sneak in. And instead of eating them, the lions sit down and sleep with them. Yep. And then when they wake up, they're like, oh, God, there's lions again. But and then they're, they're like, all no, friends. look, it turns out the lions aren't that bad. That turn happens so quickly. It's so insane. fast. Everybody's like, so not, happy to be like, to kill them they're now. so friendly. And then they're down there batting everybody around. After they were just stalked through with this whole house for like an hour. An hour. An hour. Yeah. It is an hour of... Like an hour of, of screen uh, time, that is. Not yeah. an hour of movie time. An no, hour of an screen, hour screen time. time. Yeah, it was a lot. Them yeah, hiding boy. in lockers and in cabinets are getting no, knocked over. No, they're awfully forgiving and... of these giant animals yeah. when they eat them. The animals just completely... That's the other thing, too. It's like, I don't understand, just from the movie's point of view, how it's supposed to be saying, like, no, it's good to live with lions. Because... Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. the cost. They destroy a motorcycle... They rip all your luggage apart. The house apart. is just... They destroy the house in about five minutes. <laughs> they go through the drywall like it's nothing, Yeah, man. they're opening yeah. everything up. They got to chew on everything. At some point, you can't own a boat. They'll they'll destroy they'll, that. Yeah. They apparently. rip all your clothes. You put your shirt on in the morning, and by, like, you know, 9 a.m., it's all torn yeah, and shit. Holes. Like, you need new shirts. I did appreciate the, the cat tearing open the couch cushion because I was like, my cats, like, they come so close, mm-hmm. you know? They, like, cats, like, they if scratch they on could. shit they shouldn't all the time. And I'm like, this is my cat's dream right here to be yeah. shredding this couch cushion like this lion. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, maybe that was the, the whole point. Mm-hmm. It's like, we need to save these animals because they're not meant to live in these house but conservatories. But these people actually did in real life, though. No, like, they I actually, know. So, like, they're yeah. not... They're not, they're not practicing what they're preaching. We if do that's have their, like, uh, but they're like, we they're feel saying. like we have to do this because we have to save them. But we we don't have to if you help us I save think, them. I think his feeling you know? is, is like I'm giving them a central area to live so that I can protect them. But we should. But have we need to, to do better should, than yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. But let me just exactly. import all these animals that don't normally live here to right. protect them. It does. Together. It doesn't yeah. make any <laughs> sense. No. It's a rich person. It's a rich eccentric person being a rich eccentric person. It, Really um, unless yeah. he's talking to other rich eccentric people who go off to Africa on safaris so they can bag trophies and stuff like that. It's like uh, there is the uh, at the end of the movie we're treated to in the end credit crawl. A good portion of it is the message of like what mm. they say, like 90 percent of uh, the animals that were featured in the film were killed like after the film was made or something like something that like by that, yeah. poachers or something like that. So it's yeah. like that's the audience that I think he's. Or he, that he's trying to create, he's appealing to the common man through a film. 
right? I think so. To rise up so that, you know, Do what these you can. Uh, folks who can afford to go over there and kill the animals uh, are called out. Here's you know. the thing, though. In the movie this... that leads up to that message does not... It, well, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like... It doesn't reinforce that message, though. Well, and the majority of the movie, he's, like, protecting the lions from one rogue lion. Like, shouldn't the poachers be the main big bad of this movie that he's protecting them against? Well, the movie yeah. has two villains, right? The You're ones right. that show up for two seconds. Like... Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's these guys who show up at his uh, dock. I guess when you have... Yep. Yeah, show them yeah. up at the dock. These are the committee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they show up and they basically say, like, uh, you know, your tiger was off doing something and we're going to shoot it. Not only are we going to shoot your tiger, but we're going to shoot your lions, too. We're going to shoot all the, you know. And he's like, you know, get out of here. <clears throat> it's like, don't do that. Number two villain is Togar. Togar, <laughs> the blood streaked. Uh, Scar. You know, Constantly blood streaked. Yeah. yeah. Who's off. Doing what? I don't know. During the movie, but he's, everyone's he's around. obviously slaughtering I, and eating things. I assume he's developing a Nazi regime of hyenas somewhere. Yeah, that's my guess. I, that's not a bad. Uh, you see, this is where the movie could have gone in that direction, but we don't. Right, he's like a wise. rogue lion, right? Who we're. I mean, I guess I got the impression that you know, well, there's Robbie. Is the good Robbie. lion? He's the yeah. good lion. Yep, looks the, just like all the other ones. There's no yeah, you can't <laughs> no tell signifying apart. marks on him. I don't know. He looks a little more. Well, proud. he has a theme, right? When he's on screen, the he music. Has Robbie's swells. theme, yeah. Uh, Robbie saves the Swiss Family Robinson from the attack of the uh, the lions at some right. point, mm -hmm. right? He's the one who shows up and is like, "Get out of here, lions! They're just humans. They're friends." <laughs> uh, friends that we uh, chew no, on. I'm going to eat them, not yeah. you. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, there is, uh, but they, they do pull off like a lot of these uh, lion acting shots. Yeah, where you kind of do wonder, like, how did they get all these lions to behave this way? Well, after four years of fucking filming, I hope you I, have I something like, to show for it. You yeah. know, I was like I'm guessing they just Honestly, have a lot of film. I don't think a they have enough for, for having four years, considering some uh, the weird edits that happen in this movie to cover up things that are happening. Yeah. Like it doesn't well, seem like, is like um, it doesn't exist. Yeah, he's got a bandage movie. on his hand before he gets injured. Then we see him get injured. Then we see him putting the bandage on his hand. Like that's the continuity. But even when of you think movie. about how that all came about, like think about what happened in the, that scene. Yeah. Right. We see him uh, trying to keep the two lions from fighting. No, yep. oh, we got to stop. And then the guys on the boat show up. The committee. Yeah. Right. Then. In the middle of like them telling him, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shoot your lions. He's like, oh, no. Robbie and Tovar, Togar are fighting. And then he leaves the he meeting. He leaves. Then he gets injured. Then he goes into the house. He bandages his hand where the lions are like, mm, your hand looks right, very looks tasty. tasty. Which is an actual even, wound. Even, <laughs> actual even wound. Gary was like, hey, you're a, you're a bag full of this. I'm gonna like eat you're you. delicious. You because it was real great. blood. Yes. Real wound. During yeah. this time, uh, all the other animals attack the committee. Right. This is this whole scene. They're swimming. There's like tigers in the water. Sinking boats, <laughs> knocking people over. People getting heads. scalped, which ah. we assume is all real. No, yeah. it's probably fake, but. Sure it's hard to is, tell. It's hard to tell, hard man. It's hard to differentiate. But this is an interesting uh, place to be in movie cine uh, you know, movie watching where you're like, I don't know if that was real or not. Yeah. They may have gotten somebody got tag with a claw and they just kept it in the movie mm -hmm. yeah i don't know because what is this movie that we're watching it's just uh no is this rated were, g were harmed in the making of this film 70 cast members were say that again no animals were harmed in the making of this film 70 cast and crew members were 70 people Roar. injured in the making of this film <laughs> that's probably why it took four years everyone kept quitting keep Did hiring they? news i i imagine everyone except yon de bont Yandabon got scalped, and he's just like, I'll be back in two weeks. You know, I saw in the end there were, uh, not only did Yandabon, he not was a camera operator, he uh, was the uh, editor-in-chief. No. <laughs> like, this guy was committed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Was. It's like, I'm not going to get this opportunity again. There's like three camera operators credited. I'm like, yeah. ha the other two quit, right? Yeah. Or something. We're guessing here, right? I don't know if this is true or not. but uh, There's a lot of people who were on this movie and then got like injured and we're just like oh no i'm done i'm not coming back so there's we imagine that there's entire plot and cast that 
aren't in the movie because their part was rewritten. Or it it was, was also at a at a moment at like three years into filming this movie, there there were a lot of like uh, uh, natural disasters that really fucked this movie over. There was uh, there was a flood that killed um, that destroyed a lot of camera equipment, a lot of footage that had previously been shot, and a lot of the animals in the movie. Um, I think, uh, and they got loose once the, like, um, uh, the flood destroyed that and a bunch of them got loose and they had to kill like, like 11 of these lions. Once had they had to loose. kill them? Or are you saying? They got loose in like the communities oh. and had to kill them. Like Robbie, the main one like died. They had to shoot him. So Robbie got killed like three years into the making of this movie. It's almost um, like they were, you know, more damaging to their cause than helping. I know. Imagine that. <laughs> this is the naivety of of these people. There was also rich uh, eccentrics. Yes, man. There was also a fire at some point that destroyed a lot of the set and the house for this thing, and it had to be rebuilt again. We discussed like the budget for this thing ended up being seventeen million dollars, and this is why it took total eleven years to make this movie because shit just kept happening, and so they had to reshoot a lot of this. Imagine shit. that. Imagine <laughs> that. Well, this well, was a I mean, shit you can just watch show. it. The budget, I mean, I assume because every single prop that they brought on it got destroyed. Every one of them, you know, yeah. So I was just sitting there, like every time something would happen, going like, "That's you know, I can hear the cash register ringing." Yep. It's <laughs> this is impractical. Yeah, <laughs> if nothing else, this is a dumb idea else, for a movie. It's impractical, <laughs> but God bless you, sir. You've made uh, something that, uh, yeah, is what insane. a hill to die on, though, man. Like, yeah, like this you is know? the thing I'm gonna. This uh, is my passion project. Whether right. I'm yeah. gonna let it kill me, you know. Well, he believed in it. Apparently, I mean, he see, he oh, exudes. Uh, yeah. This guy is one of these. Uh, so this is uh, the hippie era, right? We're coming out of the hippie era. He kind of exudes that We're coming kind out of, of it, but he's a leftover of it. He was a mainstay in that era, and this is the uh, the resid- He he is the residue of the hippie era. Yeah, and this is what happens. It's a lot of uh, love, love your fellow man, love your fellow the creatures right. that we, we live in with. Peace with. That's kind of where humans he went. And animals and all that. Yeah, we can all live together in peace. Right. And harmony. They don't deserve to be killed. They yeah. deserve to be saved. They yeah. just ate Christians like you know those two thousand years ago, and they dumped Christians into the lion pit. Mm. Now they don't really eat people not at all they try <laughs> uh yeah this is the only movie that he uh directed noel marshall i believe so it's the only movie he acted in is it yep really yeah well, that's he, hard to he, believe he was, considering again, how producer. convincing he was <laughs> right i wouldn't movie. want to watch wow. him acting anything else unless no, he was playing he a has, crazy person i but he has an exuberance that I guess I could have seen being yeah. like sure, for the as, for the right role, yeah. Directed by somebody like he has a, I don't know, not a charisma. Yeah. No, I in, guess a natural in, charisma. In this, I I believe his insanity. I do too. If he <laughs> like, was yeah, to I play believe a he's a crazy in a different movie, yeah. I'd be like, oh yeah, I believe this man. Yeah, sure. I always thought it'd be like he'd be like the um, he'd be good like the, uh, the he guy. would be good in The Exorcist. <laughs> like as someone who's just uh, you know uh, a follower of some devil or something you don't get yeah but you don't get the feeling that like he could have had like uh who's the fucking curly haired guy from star crash M- marjo gortner marjo gortner <laughs> there you go right no because marjo gortner has got like uh well he went the other way he went from like being crazy to like becoming a bland uh, Hollywood leading man, sure. But I imagine, like in my my mind, I'm making up the uh, the no uh, Marshall thing. Right, no, he no. was like a normal bland leading dude who went off and his you know made his money, became like a crazy you know like uh, advocate for lions right. in Africa, and then made a movie about it. And it's right. like whoa, and then he never worked again. That well, that's it because no one. I don't think if he ever got hired for anything else, he would not be controllable on set. He would just be fucking. The weird guy. He would like drift he's, off, and we'd never see him again. He's a lion himself. He, he is. He really is. <laughs> well, he is the the. Uh, he has to have been the alpha in some way, right? In this, because his whole way of approaching the lion is basically to put his arms out as far as he can, and then kind of make an angry face and right. run at them, run straight at them, going right. run into the danger. <clears throat> Which, like, I don't think that really works with predatory animals. Very often, like with no, prey I'm animals, that you. for sure works. I think but like uh, with a bear, they they're, they say you're just supposed to be like make yourself tall and yeah. scare them off. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it works for anybody else. And blast Metallica. Sure. Sludge. There you go. I don't think they had Metallica I mean, it, back then. 
it kind of makes sense. I, I think it might be the only technique I would think to use in that if, situation. If in that or just situation, don't get involved, that is what I would like do. He, I'd be like, Wah! yeah, <laughs> and hope to God that the cat would be like, well, "What's yeah. up with you? What are you doing?" I think in a lot of cases it might work. Uh, that would be know. the only thing. I think that's what everyone would try for. Well, like, let's try and be big and loud. But and it scare must off. work in some capacity. Sure. I mean, this is the thing. The guy has has lived with lions and been around them for so Doesn't long. Doesn't mean he knows shit. Grizzly Man Does it, tells Yeah, I was going to say, this, Grizzly yeah. Man, yeah. It's, that documentary will tell you everything you need to know about people yeah. who do shit like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, don't worry. I agree with you, right? But I, from his point of view, right, if you're getting inside his psyche, he's sitting there going like, when I do this, like, you know, I can control them. They've never really hurt me too bad. Uh, we can actually, I, I have achieved this, like, understanding with the beast, you know. We we roll around on the floor and play together. I think this, they get me. I think this I get them. is possible to an extent. Not his extent. There are, it feels like a hundred animals running around on this set. Just... It's it's a barrage of, of like a stream of lions wherever you look. Now I've seen plenty of the nature shows where you got the guy who's been raising the lions, and there's like twenty of them and all that, and just like he shows up back on the the sanctuary where they're all at, and he like greets them, and they jump on him. And oh, they that one video stuff. where they hadn't like, seen each other like, in like ten years. Well, the there's that, but around. there's yeah. more like recent stuff like that where where they they all do play and everything. But this is an overabundance that he cannot handle. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it feel very dangerous. Maybe yeah. in a smaller number, sure, he could, like, get to, uh, I don't know what I'm saying here, get to know the personalities yeah. of these lions. Well, or No, like, I, I agree. I think in the, I think he used the right word there. In this case, I think he has the ability to handle them. I don't think he has the ability to control them in right. any way. I think it's it's the perspective of his perspective of their relationship is completely different than it is from the lions. Like Oh, definitely. He, I agree. He's projecting emotions A and lot. and relationships onto them that do not exist. Right. But this is what happens in these cases. Mm-hmm. I mean, Absolutely. Generally like how and Usually, like, yes. I'm always like I, it's the human thinking they understand them. And going from there, and then they get fucking eaten. This is why I hope I, you know, I, I think I have a better chance at living a longer and healthier life than this guy. Sure. You know, just because I don't put myself in these crazy situations. I'm right. just going to say right now, I'm never going to get eaten by a lion. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll gonna, take, I'll, I'll put that out there. there. I, I'm okay. never going to get eaten by a lion. I, th- I think that's a safe statement. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can make that statement. <laughs> no, I might be the you guy got some plans like, to go live in a fucking yeah, awesome like, trick cabin and so- no, but I would. You're gonna go visit Shambhala in the gate, yeah. like oh, Jurassic Park. I, I would and- venture. I I think if I had the uh, the resources to do so, I'd get closer to that reality of being like, like go to near Africa. Them. Then your plane goes down. You're out there all by yourself. I might like go to Africa and happens. like go visit some lions. Do you yeah. honestly think that's something that's going to happen in your lifetime? No, I don't think so. So you're not going to get eaten by a lion then? <laughs> Probably. If the resources were there, I might do it. Yeah, but that's you know, a big odds if. Odds are I'm not going to get eaten Also, by a lion. I'd be willing to bet that if you had the resources to travel somewhere, Africa would not be your first place to go. Mm, no, probably not the first well, place. Right. Like, <laughs> once you achieve, like, you know, once you get really rich, you got to go to Africa and go see the expanse. Because I think it's the it puts a thing on your head. The, just the because it's like the wild country out there in the savannah, right? Where it's, it, there fe- are it feels like giraffes. something that's never changed for uh, hundreds of years. Or, yeah, millions. So the giraffes are still running around. Wasn't there like a there was like a thing a couple years ago where they wanted to get the Great Migration added as like one of the wonders of the world? Yeah, because yeah. it is yeah. the scope and scale of it sure. is just insane and it's like clockwork it happens the same like span of months every year Mm -hmm. and it is like it's like the scene in the lion king where all those animals are on the water hole like that actually happens yeah yeah Yeah. okay i take it back uh i'm not gonna go to africa i'm just gonna go to one of those zoos where you can drive in (laughs) you can drive in and feed a giraffe (laughs) i think that will 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 say dude you can feed a giraffe at the zoo in in, uh i know i've never gone there but five bucks and you get they give you a handful of branches all right so so, it's not africa It's just, settled. I'm going to go 10 miles away yeah, and do that. It's All settled. Right. Sean just needs to go to the Brookfield Zoo. I just need to go to the Brookfield Zoo. There we go. I, you know, I wasn't clear on what my desires were. Wait, I am have now. Have you ever seen a giraffe in person? Yeah, I fed him. 
Well, I, well, this is this movie has like I mean, in the opening, there's a scene where Noel Marshall is out riding his uh, motorcycle alongside a giraffe, just at full now, gallop. Now that's something I would like to do. I mean, but these are scenes. This is what this movie does. It has this kind of scale and scope to it that you're like, that's production. At some point, Tippy Hedren, and I just remember she opens. She's going around opening all the windows in the yeah. house. And like out the window, prehistoric you know, pelicans there, are hanging there's out. There's a yeah. pelican there, and the other window, there's a rhinoceros or a elephant. elephants in the distance. Yeah, other window is you know it's a bunch of lions that just killed a zebra, but you know, and then yeah. proceed to bring the carcass pieces bloody into yeah. the yeah. house. We should talk about the elephant a little bit because I feel like he he really gets lost in the shuffle of the hundred lions here. But mm-hmm. elephants are not to be fucked with either. Not this one. Yeah. No. This well, one rips a boat in half. I mean, have, <laughs> have you seen that video that was just recently online of the, the fucking safari jeep that the the elephant is like chasing it, like oh, charging it? Th- I mean, there's have a lot of those that? videos. They're so super like, territorial. I know, but there was just one like a week ago. Yeah, yeah. no, I yeah. saw that one. They're, they're super like, territorial and like they can run a lot faster than you think they can. I bet, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I think a lot of people think because they're big, they're slow. It's yeah. basically you know? like the T-Rex chase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing. You kind of get, you get, uh, you lose the awe in some ways of these uh, animals by seeing them in the circus, right? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen elephants up close at the circus. And this they're... movie brought that awe back. Yeah. Because it, this is, you're seeing them out in the open where yeah. it's like, this is where they live and you know what they do. They have do not been whipped there. for the past five years <laughs> yeah. to perform this thing. And they're this thing is like just, want. Like, fuck this boat. Fuck that part of it. <laughs> fuck this part. It rips an aluminum boat in half. Yeah. And then keeps on going after yeah. it. Like, I'm like, and what is it, it getting out like, of this? Fuck this. Is it yeah. just for its entertainment at this point? Like, it can't eat it. But What's it? It just wants to smash the fucking thing. This is not to, natural to, to my environment. Yeah. yeah. Ah. There are villages in Africa where they actually, like, it's always like rogue male bull elephants will just like tear houses down for uh, no reason. Yeah. And they're actually they had a problem for a while where there was a village where like they would tear houses down and then they would rip open like barrels of wine and get wasted. Like they would <laughs> So then once they learned that there was a house that had that, they just kept attacking the same house over and over again because they were like, We got drunk here once. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is where the good shit is, yeah. boys. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of things that up. you didn't think you were going to see in this movie. You got uh, tigers riding uh, in the back seat of a car, yeah. flinging itself, a convertible, flinging itself at high speeds along the edge of a mountain cliff. Yeah. Uh, you have lions riding boats, yeah. sinking boats. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, well, the aforementioned uh, uh, lion on a, a skateboard. I mean, crush I species gonna... fighting. That was so interesting. There were yeah. some tiger yeah. lion fights and some like yeah. panther like. There were some cheetah liger, fights. There and... were liger births. Yeah. Liger movie, births. Apparently, in this movie. I wanted to see the lion on elephant fight. I'm like, did the lions just leave the elephants alone? I think. There's I think the so. Separation of the water. I think. Yeah. I think they're just, just like, the size of the thing. Like, I don't want to fuck with it. Yeah. I think. I mean, they could kick them in the head and they'd be done for. You know, tiger just like. Nah, it's too big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to yeah. deal with that. I'll go for the small ones, but uh, mm-hmm. that big one. He, I, did you see him fuck up that boat? I don't want to deal with him. Mm-hmm. Well, we're talking about it now, like in cataloging all this stuff. I mean, it sounds like a nature documentary. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's, it's a nature not, documentary. It's, it's like the angry highlights. People. It's like all the angry moments. Like, Yeah. <laughs> it's, right? like ja- it's, it's like it's jackass like, for animals. Right. It's all those moments you see where they're chasing the vehicle, but then somebody decided to get out and live with them for a year. Like, that's, that's mm-hmm. this movie. Uh, Melanie Griffith. Melanie we're Griffith. told by the uh, the 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 trailer that she suffered facial re- had to have facial reconstructive surgery, right. Because of an injury she suffered in this movie. Almost is that lost. scene in the movie? No. Glad it was worth it. I thought it was gonna be when I because I kept hearing about that. Did she one. get like bit on the face or something? She got like around like the top of the head and uh, I think around the side as well. Um, because it was close to her eye because they thought she was going to lose her eye. And I've seen pictures Jesus. of her, like, bleeding from the top of her head a lot. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was expecting it to be in this movie, and it was not. I never saw her with that said, injury I think in the they movie. said it happens in this movie, but I'm just like, I didn't see it. Yeah. There's a scene where a lion appears to be, like, basically biting her in and about the waist. Yeah. yeah. But uh, nothing really comes of that. But, no. yeah. 
Yeah, I, so I, we're assuming that they maybe that was something that was excised from the movie. Mm-hmm. Apparently, but none of the I didn't see any shots where she seemed to have like the an injury. Right, at least not from on it. the head. No, <clears throat> the, I guess like in four years of footage, you can choose to just not use any of that. I guess not. I was kind of disappointed in that. Did the movie make any sense to you at all when you were watching it? Nope. I mean, could you follow a thread? There wasn't a thread to follow. I don't feel like. Uh. <laughs> Like I said, it's like a, a first act, but the first act is the entire movie. Yeah. He's trying to meet his family at the airport because they're coming to visit him. The messages get crossed. Uh, they end up at his house. He ends up at the airport, and then he's got to go back to uh, save them. And From the lines that he has in the That he knows are there and all And there's that, stuff. that fucking committee who's the en- the villain right. of this movie. That's like the B plot. Yeah. Right, that's the, the B, B plot, plot is they're out there's... shooting people. Right. You know, so, this is. Yeah, there's shit to follow. I actually did think. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, you is... say B plot. They show up at the beginning of the movie and the end. The whole middle of the movie, they're not they're, to that's be seen. That's very true. They're not there. They're in it basically, like, you see them riding horses. Yep. And then it cuts away to yep. something else. Until they are going around in the end shooting the lions, which I'm like, they must have tranquilized them or something because we do see animals getting like falling down hills. I think they, they, whatever, the editing at that point is like, it's really good because they just had shots of these animals falling down hills. I was wondering if that was reverse footage. I don't think so. I think it's them falling down hills. They just cut at the exact moment of the gunshot. To the whatever tiger or lion falling down a hill, so mm. it looks like oh you shot him and they fell down. So I right, think I'm just, I'm questioning how they got the footage of them falling. I think down, they just waited and got it. Like again, but they all looked the, like they were on the same like. Cliff I think that's face. it. I think it was they may have noticed a recurring thing that happened, like these animals would go up to this part of the mountain mm-hmm. and just keep falling down. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, because they Hard could have been tranking them, but I didn't see the darts. No. You know, and usually those with the flower thing Maybe. on the end of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like the late seventies. Sure, yes, and that's how but they all looked. Yeah, here is, right. I guess what you know this was building toward because I mean, you know, I guess these guys are the villains, right? Uh, and they're like, we're gonna kill these lions because they're apparently just hunting them because the motive is never really clear. I wasn't sure if the committee is angry because the lions have been intruding on a village or something like that, mm-hmm. and so they're like, we got to put them down, or if they're just hunting them for sport. Oh no, they do actually say we got to skin them. Because they're worth something. Oh, is that what they say? Yeah. yeah. At one point, he says, leave the lions because they're not because worth it. The lions aren't worth it. The other okay. ones are, yeah. Because I was wondering that. I'm like, what the fuck is their problem? Like, they want to skin why, them. Yeah. Why are they like up his ass all the time? That's I don't right. understand this plot at all. Yeah, they weren't really clear They're, they're claiming they're a danger, but they really just want to kill them okay. and skin them. I but think that's what the I, whole thing. What I was, was trying to figure out was like, how was Noel Marshall, the director of this, uh, this piece, yes. and going to, uh, you know, because it's building up a scene where they get surrounded by lions. Mm. And so, uh, and because they've been shooting these, these creatures, like now the lions turn on them. And so now we're going to have a fucking bloodbath. The movie actually does have a bloodbath. You don't really see it because I don't know if the footage is there, but the impression is that the lions do tear these guys apart Yeah, because we see the aftermath there, you know, for whatever he says, not rated, but I'm sure it was like, he was trying to be a family friendly. Bring the kids, yeah. Bring the kids to this movie, and they'll get indoctrinated with the idea that right. you gotta, the lions are we need awesome. To save these animals. Gotta save them. Um, but I was curious how he was going to treat this because it's like, do you have this magnanimous kind of uh, worldview where all creatures are uh, worthy of saving, and so even though these bad guys have been shooting at the lions, they're still people. And so we have to come in and, you know, Noel Marshall has to save them from them. Right. So, you know, he can teach them, you know, it's like, this is bad. So a lesson can be learned. Or is it like in favor of, of well, it's the law of the jungle and you fucked with the lions and clearly they're bigger than you and they tore you to pieces and it's your own fault. And ha ha. I think this movie is definitely law of the jungle. It feels like. I don't think he's necessarily going ha ha when they get killed by I the lions. Think, oh come on, he loves as a director. That's why that scene is there. He's like there to say like he's getting revenge it's on. Like this is what happens. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, poachers and shit like that. Yeah, like this that's is what him to you. getting like yeah. Right. They are the villains but of his worldview. I would interv- I would argue that he is intervening just as much as they are, just in a different way. Mm-hmm. So that 
the, the is argument in this movie there, makes so no yeah. sense. Yeah. Also, yeah. He's also causing strife. Exactly. In this world. Yeah. Yes. It, oh, yeah, uh, definitely. If you really, honestly, truly care about conservation, like this movie claims it does, leave, leave them alone. Yeah. Like, just Go leave them alone. Away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. If you want to give them an area, fine, but leave them alone. Like, you don't yeah. need to live with them or amongst no. them. That, that is fulfilling some sort of weird dream you have. That yeah, is a completely is, selfish yeah, this goal. This is where the delusional, I understand yeah, them this, more than anybody else. This is not an animal sanctuary. This is chaos. No, no yeah. absolute chaos. Mm-hmm. You, we are mm-hmm. not meant to no. keep the. I am you, me. All of us here are not meant to keep the order of lions. Well, we that's why we cats. have cats. Beca- but that's why, that's we, have why cats. we have cats. That's why we bred them down <laughs> to a manageable we size. Look at them and realize, oh, you shouldn't be any bigger because mm-hmm. I will die. Yes. <laughs> that's why you we know. made them to a manageable size. Yes. You know, now that you said when you said there was a flood, for some reason, a flood. I remember like a flood coming in and destroying that whole uh, house yeah. in the movie and watching it tonight, going like. I guess that's not actually going to happen. <laughs> but I remember the scene. Yeah, you remember it's the, the flood? Weird, yeah. I remember that's that funny. house being destroyed by, and I must have had that, like, uh, maybe they mentioned it in a documentary and, like, somehow. I'm sure they did. Maybe. I'm remembering the vision of it that so I had. So you just imagined it? Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Because everything weird. else goes wrong in this movie. Why I was not? Say, in fair, in all fairness, the house is destroyed. It's just destroyed by And lines. it's sitting on water. Like, it, it is really a house is. built on stilts in the water. Yeah. Yeah. For what purpose? Not, I don't know. Just so he could be near water for the animals. I know it's a rich person's house too. It it's is. Like it's a big ass house. Open stairs. floor plan. Stairs everywhere. This is like a, a, a house from Inception. There's just stairs all over the place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and it's like an MC, MC Escher drawing and yeah. fucking sitting on a lake. And you got dudes and motorcycles. At some point, his sons are like because not only stairs, you have ramps. There's a lot of ramps. Holly, what did you call it? You said. <laughs> Did you say Swiss Family Winchester Mansion? Yeah, it's the Swiss Family <laughs> Winchester yeah. Mansion. <laughs> like they just kept building on rooms to the this stairs house. that yes. go to right. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like made for the cats, yeah. not made for people. Yeah, no, it's right. you know, you know those like those cat platforms that you get with yes. the, the many levels. Yeah, and the scratchy oh, yeah. posts. That's the whole house. That's the house. That it's even made house. out of like wood, like the cats yes. have to scratch. Yeah, That's very true. The, the whole house is a house massive scratchy post mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. That might be With a gigantic yeah. water wheel at the back. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because he's built it, like, not beside the river. It's on the river. It's on the river. On he stilts. Build it on the river. Mm-hmm. Build up from the middle of the river. Yeah. It yeah, looks like it It looks like that part in Disney World where the riverboat is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's exactly what it looks like. I remember like. that. Pirates of the Caribbean is nearby. Yeah. You've ever been to Disney World, Cal? I have not. <laughs> I haven't. So, I haven't, yeah, so I can't Aww. contribute. I know every so. kid goes to Disney oh, World. It's okay, still Cal on my, uh, should, you know, we, bucket list. Should we field trip and <gasps> podcast from the Haunted Mansion? Yes! I've always wanted to go. That, I tried to do that last week, and you guys poop it. Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. We weren't mansion. in the Haunted Mansion, okay. though. No. It only works if you're in. You have, you've never, Sorry, we're wait, leaping into this episode. You've never episode. been to the Haunted Mansion? Yeah. No, but I've you've heard the recording No, I've never been to Disney. He's never been to Disney. That's Paul Freeze did the voice of that. Haunted Mansion is the best thing in the world. It's so great. So great. You know, they frequently have to shut it down because people dispose of uh, people's ashes there. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. They do it a lot. It has shut down a lot because people dump ashes. Disgusting. Wow. Yeah, it is. Weird and unusual. They do it on Pirates of the Caribbean, too. Hmm. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Things you learn. Uh, And then there's that one odd guy who's just like, dump me and it's a small world. (laughs) That's where I want to go. (laughs) <laughs> All right, listeners, you heard it here first. Sean's Aww. ashes. It's a small world. I if feel we like don't they do would it, have to steal you my have ashes, to make it happen. Which is what you're asking them to do right now. <laughs> we'll start a Patreon, and the subscribers can get a little packet of Sean's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> if it benefits someone, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Patreon benefits us. That's fine. <laughs> burn so me you're up. Cool with it. Burn me up, and it, yeah, if someone's right, we're like, having a barbecue after donate this for this. Episode. Episode. Yeah, hopefully you can get something from my death. That's fine. All I'm right. dead. I don't care. <laughs> Not at that point. Burn me up, and what? What are they going to do? I'm you, either going to get buried underground, and no one's going to see me ever again, or you can burn me up and make money what off. What I of heard me? is well, Sean's cool with us killing him as long as right he makes us money. Body. Yeah, I was going to say this is documented, Sean. We. This, <laughs> Jesus. All right, if I die, it was, it was these three. So, I don't know, I your ashes will be on Patreon. I feel right. like I feel like we should dump your ashes at the lion part of the um the fucking animal kingdom. <laughs> I just want to say I'm perfectly healthy right now. Uh, I'm Famous doing, last words. I'm doing great. And I don't he, have any trips planned coming up. Didn't, so. he, didn't Steve Jobs also think he was perfectly healthy and knew more than a doctor, and then he died of cancer? 
Because yeah. he wouldn't he would go, go to a go doctor. To a doctor. Uh, yeah. So I just recently checked the brake line on my car. It's fine. <laughs> so How recently? Uh, Sean, <laughs> like a month ago. Sean, I have no doubts that you will be an old cat man. That's uh, no doubt. Yeah, so no I'm doubt. fine, folks. That's so right. We, you're going to find... Uh, uh, see, uh, the irony is uh, someday somebody's going to come into Sean's uh, uh It's going to be like this, but with cats? Mm-hmm. Probably Tiny old cats. folks' home. Mm-hmm. And they'll still get eaten? The cats will have eaten. Can we just yeah. remake Roar yeah. with cats? Yeah. Yeah. Like just regular so cats. It's called by. Strays. We yeah. I was like, did you guys ago? watch that two weeks ago? <laughs> Holly, how were you not here for Strays? I know. Uh, I'm so sad I missed it. God. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to tell you if you should watch this epic motion picture called Roar. But first of all, Roar. we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we need to bring out our mailman. His name is Igor. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, buddy. Roar. I don't know. I mean, what's he doing? <laughs> well, he doesn't. He, he meows. He's got a lion's head on, like he thinks he's a oh, that's weird. No, Viking no. warrior, but it actually just makes him look like a. That's weird. Like he's a mascot. Just, yeah, he looks yeah. like an ill fitting like mascot right now. Ew. Don't, go. don't, Is he going to a furry party? Let him know about He's those things. He's got a tail on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a pin the tail on the Sean, Igor? we need to put a stop to this. That's he needs weird. to not know I mean, what furries well, are. Can we, do we have to, we can't just tamp down, like, that's who he is. We need to cut off his internet access, I think. I'm, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because that's where he learned it yeah. from. Right, if he still needs to do it, that's fine. I'm not going to stop him from doing it, but we could probably take away internet that's for right. a while. It's yeah. going to get bad when he starts licking people. Mm-hmm. Oh. Especially no, he's just here. licking his balls right now. Uh, so I tell you what, I suppose we should remind you because you've <laughs> suffered through the entire episode, and you want to know how you can reach out and tell us what you really think of us, <laughs> right? And to do that, you can get a hold of us uh by, on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, uh, on Twitter at Sat Freak Show, by email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. This is the Warts and All podcast uh, <laughs> mailbag. Just FYI. Oh. So, Podcast Junkie 64 writes in and says, So very few movie podcasts give you everything you're looking for. This one hit just about every mark so well. Wow. Woo! No, oh, thanks. That's really nice. That's awesome. We try. Well, well, then Podcast Junkie continues to say, The only reason I can't give it five stars, this is a four-star review, uh, five stars is one of the co-hosts, I'm a nice guy, so I'll resist saying which one, is so harsh and needlessly cynical at times that it takes me out of the episode at times. Otherwise, a terrific podcast. Well, now you just, all right, you just made four people go, is it me? I know, yeah. I'm sitting there going like, is what? it me? I have I was, a couple of beers. I, I literally said the, that, could, and I'm thinking that could be any. I was, I was like, I think <laughs> that's been all of us is at certain me? points. Yeah. yeah, that could be any. I, also, I also curious at what, what, like, what point in the freak show history that person is yeah. listening. Yeah. Well, that, was, I'm, I'm, that could be past I'm episodes. I'm very curious. Was that was a recent too. review. But thank you for listening. I know we really appreciate it. Yeah, We're going to work on that. That is a good review. Well, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a valid um, criticism. It's a valid all right, criticism. I don't think it's me. MF <laughs> Mad. <laughs> so now, so now it definitely is you because you don't, I don't think, think it's, it's me. You. Well, MF Mad, longtime listener, keeper of the keeper of the wall, yes. wall of fame, yes. wall of fame being for you new listeners. It's the we have this galaxy of photos. The Sylvester Stallone wall. wall of fame. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so Stallone holds the record for appearing in the most movies that we've covered on the Freak Show. But Melanie Griffith. Oh, Catch from tonight's up? movie. She made it to the wall? Has made it to the wall. She's oh. been featured in three movies that we have watched. Those what? would be Roar. Surprised? Cool. No, Body Double. Body. Oh. And Celebrity. The Woody Allen movie. Oh, Apparently she's in that. I don't so remember I her being in that. fucking watch Celebrity. But she's Holly Body in Body Double. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You I guys was... got to see that movie. It's nope, good. I haven't I seen it. See uh, Zakes McKay. I think I'm saying his right. name correctly. He's a South African actor that you would probably remember from The South Serpent and the Rainbow. South African. I have not seen that movie. God damn it. You remember him from... Nobody saw Dust Devil except for me. Well, he's been on... He was in The Island, which we did. That's And that's not the Michael Bay Island, right? All right, he was in Waterworld. No, it's not the Michael okay. Bay one. It's the Michael Caine one. Okay. With the pirates. He Haven't was in Waterworld. That. Yeah, mm. we were all here for that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And apparently he was in Roar. Now, I know who he is and was watching for him and didn't see him, but apparently he's a committee member. So I'm like, was he on the boat? I don't mm-hmm. remember seeing. I know there's one actor in this movie who I did recognize from a bunch of other stuff. 
Um, was he seen in a fleeting glance? No, he had his few speaking lines in this. He, he's the uh, he's the black guy who was in. Um, he's been in West Wing. He was recently. I they cast him as Rafiki for the Lion King live action one, quote unquote. No, Zakes is, is Zikes. He's dead. No, no, he's dead. A couple of years ago. I, I don't I thought know. you were talking about someone else. No, but this actor, you know who he is. Um, oh, he's been in a bunch. Oh, he was uh, um, in Black Panther. He was T'Challa's father, who died before. Paul Win? No, who no. was his father? Not Paul Winfield. I know. No, I know. not no, Paul I'm Winfield. Of, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. But his father, who was like you, if you saw him, you'd be like, yeah. oh yeah, that guy. I'll yeah. look him up. Okay. Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in about Roar and says, I thought the summer of nature attacks movies was done. <laughs> Guess a good idea doesn't stay down for too long. I don't know. I got a wild hair up my ass. I'm just like, ah, Roar. Because <laughs> we've been doing, Michaela did the, the right. summer I think, of was. Yes. I think it was inspired. Yes. I'm just like, more animal movies. <laughs> and you're like, I can't let Holly go without seeing a, a cat, a killer right, cat. Right, I gotta movie. give I mean, Holly a cat movie. I appreciate that. No problem. Well, Tom Schmidt wants to know who should have been straight. <laughs> Tom Schmidt says, who plays the lion in this one? Donald Glover or Matthew Broderick? <laughs> <laughs> All of the above, because there's so many fucking lions yeah. in this movie. A lot of lions. Robbie. Uh, His name is Robbie. Robbie. Jonathan Holt says he can't wait to hear the freak show's feeling on this movie. Thanks. You're about to. Ryan Dooley says, I love this one. It's honestly unique, and I think you have to give some respect to any movie that shows you Melanie Griffith getting mauled by big cats. That's not a spoiler. If you're in this movie, you get mauled to some point, yeah. to some degree. Right. It's pretty it's crazy. You don't even have yeah. to be in the movie to no. get mauled by big cats. Yeah, I yeah. got mauled by big cats while watching this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, John Connie is his name. You know. You know. Do I know him? I am not positive because mm-hmm, he looks mm-hmm. a little bit like I remember Zakes him from Moke. Black Panther, yeah. Uh, B-Movie Poster Vault says, oh God, Roar. I've seen this one twice. Once after a friend imported the Blu-ray, the B-Movie crew's reaction outstripped pretty much any horror movie we've ever seen with much discussion of what a goddamn idiot Noel Marshall is. Right. Less idiot. than a year later, we saw it in a theater during a 24-hour movie marathon with a couple of hundred unsuspecting film heads. That was an experience. I bet. The crowd reactions nearly oh, yeah. drowned out the movie I, at points. This would be a good drive-in movie. Oh. It would, I would love to just watch this with people who have not seen it. Yeah, and have giant no crowds. idea what they're going. No idea. Yeah, I would yeah, love to. Yeah, that's a great crowd. This has just got to be a lot of like, oh my god, which is what we were doing to this yeah. entire yeah. movie. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> well, about last week's movie, The Sentinel, the purple robot yeah. of Cairo, writes in and Welcome. says, "Wow, yeah." That's nice. Sounds yeah. important. Uh, this movie is bananas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, Andy K250 says black and white cat, black and white cake. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Sean. You'll get it's that a, one day. No, I got it. It's, uh, it's, it's insane. And Rusty Ryan, uh, thank you for the t-shirt, sir. Yeah, uh, thank says, you. Uh, thank when you. you mentioned that your next movie exploration was going to be The Sentinel, I smiled ear to ear. Thank you for doing this. It's an undiscovered classic and worthy to be seen. It's the very dis- disturbing scenes of the Legion of the Dead that really puts the movie in a class by itself. It's unsettling. It's creepy. It's jolting. The payoff of these scenes makes up for the occasionally talky slow burn as this mystery unfolds. Thank God for the 1970s. I doubt this movie would be way, made this way now. Yeah. Instead, we'd get crappy CGI. Yep, that really is true. a disturbing scene. It's just not. It's an unnatural scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really about is the previous week's movie. Strays. 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 Uh, Andrew Bradford says the Hardy Boys TV show was legit. Well, thank you, Andrew, that somebody remembers. Yeah, Sean Cassidy was on that show, right? That's right, because he wrote uh, Strays. Uh, He says the Halloween-themed episodes, I think there were two, with one taking them into Transylvania, was interesting. Honestly, I'll check out the Halloween episodes. I'm curious what a Halloween episode that, that would one, be like. If someone mentions a Halloween episode of a series, I'll, just, I'll, I'll check it out. A series, but I'll check out the yeah, Halloween episode. That's how I am too. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. That's All really October long, I just go for Halloween episodes yeah. of TV just to see like what's out there. Right. You know? What are they doing? What is their idea? Because usually a they're like uh, they're not canon episodes, so they'll right. do no, weird they're shit. Always one-offs. Yeah, yeah, they're always one offs. Just so some weird yeah. shit. They go to a haunted house in one of the mm-hmm. Halloween episodes. Yeah. I think maybe I remember this just a little bit. You know, maybe The Simpsons should stop existing except for the Trios of Horror. Just do the Trios of Horror special every that's year fine. and that's it. I'll watch that. That'd be fine. Andrew John writes in and says, Bumstead. He says, Colin, <laughs> you had me losing it at work every time you said his name wrong. 
Also, I need to buy this movie. It sounds nuts. Buy the Shout it's Factory nuts. Blu-ray. You it's worth it. You should. <laughs> it was yeah. a good time. And about Idle Hands, Amber Kelsall had an issue about one of the posts that we made on our oh, yeah. Facebook page mm. uh, where we showed all of the cast and we're basically making fun of all of them. And it was uh, the dude from Final Destination and the dude from, uh, sorry, who else was in the movie? Seth Green. Oh, Seth Green. The, the, Dare, Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil, yeah. Foggy yeah. Nelson. Uh, yeah. But both of uh, Jessica Alba and Vivica Fox uh, were strippers in Independence Day and uh, Sin City. Right. So she said, maybe you could describe the ladies by their more badass roles, like in Kill Bill or Dark Angel, instead of just relegating them to strippers. <laughs> She makes a valid point. She does. It's very yeah. true. We did. I mean, you, uh, we did. You guys. Yeah. You guys really did do that. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, me. I, I will I, say, I if you listen to the sad, episode, yeah. we talked about how Jessica Alba's many roles and talked about how she's yeah. a billionaire genius entrepreneur. So right. yeah. And I mean, realistically, the Facebook post it was just it was being ironic because obviously Jessica Alba's known for more. Right. She was in two stripper. superhero movies before like, the Marvel Universe yeah, even existed. Right. She's fucking Fantastic Four. And yeah. Also, while I was yeah. listening to the episode, I did keep coming up with things Vivica Fox was in. Uh, booty yeah, call. we, we booty missed call Kill Bill. Yeah. yeah, in yeah. the episode. Right. Yeah, I forgot about that. And yeah. I forgot about Dark Angel, which I was kicking myself because yeah. that's right. how I knew. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree. If, I agree. If you don't know the podcast and you just come across that post, it does look. It, yeah, I get it. It does come across in a bad way. So I agree with her. But yeah. So now we're moving on, yeah, to the most exciting yeah. part of the night, which is we're going to tell you whether or not we recommend this movie, Roar. Colin. Sean. Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie, Roar? I'll tell you, Sean. Uh, you got to see this movie. This is a, I mean, just for the fact that it is um, a unique cinematic experience, I don't know that it is exactly like what the filmmakers intended. Because like I think we were saying, the filmmakers intended you to come away from this movie with the idea. I think they they thought it was an adventure film, mm. right? Like these Disney films, uh, kind of a wild adventure. You know, maybe yes. um, before Jack Hanna, what was it? Jacques Cousteau or, you know, the uh, those kind of um, uh, nature documentary type things where yeah. it was like, we're going off and we're seeing, you know, the wilds of Africa. And um, I'm sure David Attenborough was involved somehow. <laughs> yeah, was he? I can't remember if he was back then or not, but maybe. Uh, but he's doing them now, obviously. Uh, or wait, is he alive? He was. He was. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so it's an adventure film that they're thinking that you're going to come away with this with an a adventure. new appreciation for the uh, the magnificence of the jungle cat, right? And you're going to feel it in your heart that you need to, uh, you know, donate money in some way or them. make phone calls to, to save them. But that's not the experience that you get. The experience that you get is uh, it's not quite a horror movie, but it is tense as fuck the whole way through it. And that's what makes it something that you have to check this out because you cannot believe as you're watching it that human beings would be this irresponsible, right? Like at any moment. I mean, just imagine it, right? It's said 70 people were injured. What if somebody was killed by one of these lions? You know, how much? He was $17 million in on this. Would he have kept the movie going? We'd be going, no, like, no, we've crossed a moral line here. I we can't he keep going. going. Yeah, because of all the shit that we were saying that he did in the process of making this movie probably made it worse for these animals that he's making a big stink out of. Uh, you have to see it, though entertainment value through the roof through the roof uh it's just insane um i like some of the the what was the the some of the the pull quotes yeah the pull yeah. quotes yeah i, I love the was, one where it feels like, like a walt feels disney like, snuff version of the snuff, swiss family robinson right it feels yeah. like a walt disney movie but with mufasa holding on <laughs> uh, holding a fucking knife to your throat the entire time yeah yeah there's some great quotes about this movie yeah i so i appreciate that the alamo draft house figured this you know found it yeah. and uh distributed it uh this is uh it's a find you got to go check out roar i've talked too long i'm going to turn this <laughs> over to holly we got to find out what holly thought what'd you like what do you think about roar did you like it did I like it? Um, I mean, it was an experience. 
Let's just let's let's yeah. just say that. Um, going into this movie, I had read about it, but I'd never seen it. Honestly, I was afraid that it was going to be too boring and that it wasn't going to be worth like the hype. I thought that it it was going to. This, it was this gonna, is what I kept hearing. Yeah, I thought I thought it was going to drag too much, and that it, the making of it would be more interesting than the actual movie. Um, but the first like the first twenty five minutes of this movie is a fucking tense. Like shit show. It, I I can't believe what we just saw. I I really can't. It's it is unreal to think that these people are actually getting mauled by giant cats. Like it's it's unbelievable that this is an actual movie. I can't really wrap my head around it. Fucking Marshall, he is such an irresponsible fuck that he put his family in this movie. Like, it's not just him. He put his entire family in this movie. And that just, to me, is just insane. Like, Mikhail's totally right. He's just a, 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 he's just a fucking rich idiot. Like, I, I can't, I seriously can't wrap my head around it. That someone would actually put money into this, I put his family in it, and think it's a good idea, stand by it, spend 11 years on it. Die on this hill. Like, I I am amazed of what we just watched. It's ridiculous. I will say after the fir- after like 30 minutes or so, it does get repetitive. It gets redundant and it's not as exciting in like the second half of the movie. Once you get used to the cats mauling everybody, it does get a little boring. However, it's too ridiculous to to not recommend it. This movie is insane. I think everyone should watch it. I think everyone should experience it. There is nothing else like it. You you have to watch it. You have to watch Roar. Michaela. I uh I have a theory about Tippy Hendren in this movie. Uh so famously when she was making the birds um uh, uh, she was attacked by real birds in that movie, right? Yeah. So yeah. and to the point where like she was in a cage basically and PAs were throwing crows at her right. for yeah. eight hours a day for five days. And then after that, they did another eight hours a day for three days of birds tied to her for, eight, you know, Boy. so this is like almost two full weeks of just birds attacking you nonstop for like a full-time job. Yeah. Um, and they like to the point where they had to use like no stage makeup by the end. Cause she was actually like scratched and bruised that yeah. they didn't have sure. to put any on her. And I think that that kind of like, abuse that she suffered kind of like falls under this like cycle of of abuse because why would someone who went through that inflict this on her own children yeah like she's definitely caught up in this cycle of like weird animal PTSD or something it's like it's just like people who are sexually or physically abused by their parents and become abusers themselves like she subjected her daughter hurt people yeah Yeah, she's she has been conditioned at this point yeah yeah and so she she's like it's crazy that her daughter had like got basically got fucking bit on the head by a lion yeah. and like Who they does d- apparently thought that was children. normal. Exactly. Yeah. They're children. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like it it kind of makes sense that someone who suffered like abuse at the hands of like someone, you know, manipulating animals would e- exact that same abuse on their own children. Just out of yeah. curiosity, you getting that from the I'm curious because I know there were two mm-hmm. films recently about the birds and Alfred Hitchcock and Tippi Hedren. There was yeah. the I listen, girl. Oh, no, I yeah. listened to a podcast recently oh, about, okay. about yeah. Hitchcock was, specifically. The, so the girl and, uh, and oh, was Hitchcock it was behind the bastards. Behind the bastards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I listened Hitchcock, to a podcast about how much so. of a shithead Hitchcock was and that's where they were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. So. Mm. Um but so yeah, I, I think if you take that perspective of it, it makes this movie like that much sadder and like yeah. you're like basically watching someone kind of abuse their children because yeah. like because they got abused yeah yeah and um but I mean like this obviously it'll never happen again. It was a weird never. blip in time mm-hmm. that never. was yeah. able to happen because of rich eccentrics. I guess like this is kind of like in a weird way like the fire festival of that time, right? Yeah. It's like. <laughs> Fire Festival only happened because of rich eccentrics, like not having anyone control them, right? right. So it was yeah. kind of like similar kind of things, but um, like it's it's definitely something you gotta watch with a group. You watch it alone, it's really really boring. Yeah. It's not fun to watch it by yourself, and it yeah. just kind of is a slog. It's it if you look at the actual movie itself, it's not good, and there's nothing interesting there. The only thing that makes this movie interesting or worth watching is the circumstances that it was made under. Right. You strip away that like if you take out the fact that like these people are rich eccentrics fucking around, like there's no story, there's no movie, there's no. nothing there. I was, I was thinking about, you know, we kept saying it was the, the B plot or the subplot with the, the, the committee, uh-huh. the poachers or whatever that they're trying to stop. And 
you think like, oh, if they got more screen time that more, and there was more of an arc there, it'd make more sense. But we don't want to see that, you know, like we want to see the. It but that's what they were. Was, but they were still trying to make that, and they didn't execute that. No, you know? I know. Like, I'm, that was I'm the saying, least interesting part. Of I, I'm, anything. I'm saying it would have made it even worse if they had, yeah. like, spent more time on that. But like th- this, it, this is like a, a situation like the room. Like you know, Tommy was always likes, likes now to say that the room is a comedy and it was always intended to be funny. Mm-hmm. It, wasn't. it wasn't. This yeah. movie was intended to be t- wasn't intended to be like look at this snuff film. That yeah. was the, oh, it, no, it, it's it fails at what they wanted it to do. Yes, entirely. I think it fails at being a movie. I yeah. think it's a spectacle. I don't think it's a movie. Yeah. Uh, I think I think you should watch it, but I don't think you should watch it alone because it's yeah, just not. Sure. It's it's a midnight movie situation for sure. Um, and I think I think you it. I think you could almost get away with just watching the documentary and not watching the actual movie. But yeah, I mean, you get everything you need from the documentary. You see just as much maulings and shit in that. Like it's more interesting. Yeah. And it's like people being unfiltered, you know, and not, it's not editing around the interesting stuff that you want to see. You know, Uh, I think that like you, just because this is like a completely unique thing, I think you have to see it for that reason. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to check it out. Sean. Um, I'm going to say I respectfully disagree that I think that you can uh, I think this movie is fascinating and I think you could sit there and watch this movie by yourself. I've done it. I did it before. I, that's fine. But I, the, what I think I is that I was fascinated I, by I it. think you could sit there and watch this and be fascinated just sitting there because like we said this doesn't happen anymore. It, it will never happen again. To have this, I can't think of any time. Like I can't imagine. No, like what, there is nothing comparable to this. No, because even like it would put a guy in a room full of snakes. Not not yeah, right. Not right? even comparable. It doesn't even feel like because you still feel that there's some kind of safety. Yeah, you have guys running off the road and being in car accidents and getting flipped over. You know, and, and doing all these crazy stunts. It still doesn't feel like. This movie, like the safety protocols, are off. It's gone. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no safety nets for this. There's no barriers. They're just fucking. They're, luck. they're, they're it's get, luck it is luck. They're getting movie. by, <laughs> in getting in filming the scenes. The fact that they filmed any dialogue scenes while these lines are around is amazing to me. Um, that and that they. This movie is fascinating. It's wild. Um, shit. Um, like I asked Colin earlier, like I need to borrow this from you because I need to watch everything else that's on this disc because this is uh, this movie is insane. Um, the fact that it was made is insane. The reasons it was made for are insane. Uh, Noel Marshall is fucking insane. Uh, you watch this movie and you see him as a person because I, mean, I don't think he's not acting. That that is who that person is. He just wrote lines that he wanted to say. That is the guy, and he is an insane person. The reasons he wanted to make this movie, um, his logic behind it, it's crazy. And Actually, you will question because you mentioned Grizzly Man uh, yes. before. I, oh, assuming yeah, I that everybody that doesn't up. know what that is, tell us what Grizzly Man is. A uh, Grizzly Man was is a documentary made by. Now he shot. Most of it, and Werner Herzog. No, Timothy Treadwell is Timothy Treadwell. a detoxing drug addict that goes yes. up to Alaska to basically camp and get rid of his drug addiction by just like camping in the wilderness. And be- when he does that, he becomes like once again, this is what I talk about with projecting relationships. He yes. com- becomes convinced that he's friends with all these grizzly bears, and he names them all. Right. And so he goes back every summer. And he knows the ones with the attitude. The yeah, he goes back every summer. His girlfriend starts coming with him. They get eaten in their tent one night when they're sleeping by grizzly bears. Right. And Werner Herzog is the one who made who took it all and made Did the, the made the documentary. Right. But yeah, it's it's mostly using Timothy Treadwell's it, footage. Right. But exactly. like, but that documentary is famous for because it's been parodied a million times. Is there's a scene where Werner Herzog is like looks directly into the camera and he's like, "This footage is too terrible to show." So you literally watch well, him he, watch it on a laptop well, he, with headphones on. He listens on. to the audio of Timothy Turtle getting eaten. He, yeah, because his girlfriend picked up the camera when they were being attacked. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, but there's he's with like his mother or something. Yeah, that yeah, and yeah. he tells her like, "You should not listen to this. Yeah, yeah. Don't stay away from this." Yeah. Yeah. It and that stays with you, and this movie stays with you because it's again insanity. Um, <laughs> I was not bored uh, at all during this movie because if if not for like there is there's a threadbare storyline in this. Again, like I said, it's just Act One spread out over an entire movie. But I'm sitting there watching giant 
cats of Africa and people running away from them and just in knowing that it's all mostly real. Like it's, it's absolute craziness. Yes. You, you should watch this movie. You can watch it by yourself. I think it's utterly fascinating. Um, uh, and just the, just the wonder of seeing all these fucking cats with these people and these insane people (laughs) living with them. And the fact, and the story behind it is also fascinating. I think in front of the camera and behind the camera, I think both stories are great. Um, I think you should watch this and then learn everything you can about it uh, otherwise. So, I yes, I definitely recommend Roar. All right. Oh, yeah. I think that was all of us recommending. I think it was yeah. all of us. Uh, okay. That's 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 for a different, show. one reason or another, I think we all recommend Roar. <laughs> all right. So, uh, that's Roar. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, what are we watching next week? Well, well, <laughs> I've been in I've Uh-oh. been in the Halloween mood. Oh no! I, I'm I think I hit it with Idle Hands. I think that was a Halloween movie, and I'm gonna do it again next week. We're gonna watch Hell Night. Oh, oh the new one? No. Oh, the <laughs> Linda Blair one. The Linda Blair one. Okay, I got you. Yeah, oh, I don't. Yep. I don't know this movie. Oh, I don't know this movie at all. <laughs> Interesting. No? Right. no, I don't know this one. Nobody? No, I've no. never. Colin? I've, I've I don't, seen it. All right. I don't think I've ever heard of this movie. Of course, Colin's seen it. I don't think I've ever heard of this one. Right. Blair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what year? 81. In the 80s. Somewhere okay. In the early, 80s. Early, early 80s. Early 80s. All right, good. All right. Hell <laughs> Night. That's next week on awesome. the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll tune in. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.